Hey, this is Brent Salisbury at the University of Kentucky. I've got uh, my co-worker, colleague, Cody Bumgardner here with me. We're uh, going to go through and do a, the last part of this demo. We're going to spin up a 50-node cluster, show the web front end, and uh, show what we can do with this. So with that said, let's go ahead and install uh, the web front end packages. It'll pretty much uh, install itself is the nice thing. So once the package is done installing, we're going to uh, just restart Apache 2 and we'll be good to go. On this, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Cody, why don't you talk to us a little bit about uh, how the university is looking at using this and uh, you know what benefit this, uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of talk of OpenStack and cloud and content providers. Where do you see this fitting in more regional plays and R&E and then university enterprises? I think first starting at the WebStack component, that was uh, first released in, in Essex, as you're seeing here. here. Uh, that was a really vital component to really put this, the, the idea of OpenStack, in front of our, our users and our other technical people. Now, there, there are lots of commercial offerings that will wrap different hypervisors and do different resource management. Um, this is one of the few that is a nice, kind of, what you could call it cloud, but a, a larger uh, resource manager that allows us to abstract commercial and or free hypervisors and resources um, uh, way, essentially cutting out a lot of what systems people used to do in managing operating systems and hardware and putting that into the uh, hands of the requester. So you see now the uh, dashboard is up, uh, very similar to what you're used to in any kind of cloud um, environment in terms of requesting. The difference being this is running on you know commodity hardware and at least in higher ed, we get very good prices. A lot of times the, the licensing is what kills us versus the, the actual hardware. So what this will do is allow us to spin up nodes, go through and do project plans, uh, judge how much resources that we would need, architect a solution, and then pre-allocate the size of the solution and allow users to create these nodes. So here we're spinning up a quick cluster. Uh, so the nice thing is this is uh, under the hood is obviously KVN as everybody knows so uh, that's recently been integrated into the uh, core Linux kernel correct Cody? Yeah I think KVM for us has a lot of advantages um, both in you know, general enterprise and also you're seeing a lot of what, what little virtualization they have in HPC computing is usually around KVM. So recently I know IBM's started to back that pretty heavily so do you see more of a trend to the uh, zero price hypervisor? Well, we know that different every major vendor is doing a you know quote premium offering, and then they're also doing a uh, cheaper offering. What you might find interesting is that many people, for their longer term offerings, meaning something that's going to have be backed up, something that's going to be maintained, is often in a uh, free or low cost, no cost hypervisor KVM. So you're seeing the, 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 quote, premium temporary or short-term offerings in VMware and then the lot more longer-term offerings in, in KVM. And that's where I think you'll see the OpenStack uh, management platform uh, essentially allowing management of both so that depending on the type of resource that you've requested, it can go to the appropriate spot. So how do you stack uh, something like OpenStack up against, uh, no pun intended there? Pretty funny guy. Uh, how does that how does that compare with something like V V Cloud Director and some of the commercialized products? Obviously, support is something that's going to be important. Uh, support. There's not much really community. There is some community. I mean, some people are very fierce on their well anything to do with the frameworks. I think the main difference is the the licensing model of most of the. I guess I would say the management or hypervisor abstracted management suites. Um, when they first came onto the scene, a lot of them were based on you know the number of you know VM hard pieces of hardware you had, much like what VMware did. They changed their licensing model to now essentially taxing every VM. So what that does is it doesn't allow us to optimize for you know, most cost-effective use of hardware or most cost-effective uh, per performance. It makes us then work our way around a VM, and you know, we may have cut up the VMs differently. We may use five VMs. That would be optimal technical configuration, but because of the way it's licensed, we may say, well, now we're only going to do one. So the, the OpenStack platform, you know, being open and being open source, would allow us to optimize without worrying about having to, uh, to keep up with licensing on, on that side. 
So with that, uh, so the, the network piece is, today it's Linux bridging. So Linux bridging, uh, I don't know about you all, but I'm about tired of using the bridge control command. It needs to go away and die a horrible death, and we really do need a V-switch there. So the great thing is the Nova Quantum. It's uh, getting a lot, of, a lot of development being put on currently, so it's, it's going to be support from some of the various V-switches, whether it's Open V-switch, whether it's Nexus 1000P, uh, you're going to have the ability to, to uh, put your, your flavor of vSwitch and integrate this in here into the orchestration with an API there uh, to be part of the, the ecosystem. Test dev today, or where do you see it fitting in? You could do a lot of things. Of course, in an environment like a university, you can predictively know when your peak times are going to be. So if we can clone a box that then maybe a front-end or middleware that then has some you know, basically fixed source of record, then we can automatically bring those up. We can orchestrate with our load balancers to say, you know, spin up X number of nodes, either remotely or locally, and then allow basically uh, boxes to go through there. Uh, one of the more interesting things I think going forward would be if you have uh, an infrastructure uh, service manager, you can actually spin up platforms of service workers and actually do multiple of those. So spin those up, those things automatically know how to connect together. And that would be, uh, I think, a very interesting use for this sort of infrastructure manager in an automated fashion. So we notice that either compute or storage or whatever is low, platform actually will be able to orchestrate and go out and, and burst to multiple locations. And that gets it basically gets around a lot of our inner box communication problems of dealing with multiple sites because the platform itself has ways around that. And we essentially just need to know that, that nodes are available and where the nodes are. Great. Cody, thanks for your time today, and thanks for all the good work you've done on this, and we'll have uh, updates as they come out. Thanks, everybody.